Hey all, it's Moots. Welcome to Mighty MX episode 12. Today we are testing the uh, Yellow Brass Admiral from Broadside Mods. I want to thank my patrons for making this testing possible, and I especially want to thank Broadside Mods for sending over four loner uh, mods in aluminum, white brass, brass, and copper for testing. So thank you very much for that. I like testing um, different metals of the same mod because that gives everyone a lot more information as to what's important, not important in terms of performance and then they can concentrate on other things like weight, price, appearance, etc. Usual setup, uh, 60 amp power supply, 3.5 volts instead of a battery, so it's consistent, no variables there. Electronic load drawing 30 amps, no matter what the mod and the wiring resistance is, so every mod gets tested the same way. And then a voltmeter, reading the voltage across the post of the atomizer, at, which will tell us the voltage drop through the atomizer, through the solid aluminum slug, and through the mech. I subtract the effects of the atomizer and the slug and we're left with the effects of the mod itself. We're going to test uh, 2700 and 18650 with the adapter included with the Admiral. And let's get started with the first 2700 test. This is a Cosmonaut RDA which is filled with epoxy that I use for every test. Now I'll put it up. It seems to a little less rattle for me, but the instructions are positive down. I always want a little bit of gap there to know I'm tightening onto the battery itself. Just a quick test to make sure it's down to zero. Yes. Okay. I'm going to wrap that in grip tape. Okay. This just gives me a much more consistent grip from mod to mod. Uh, if my hands are sweating, it is hot, uh, humid today. So uh, we don't have that variable also. And the last thing I do is I press the button before I fire a two second pulse of current being drawn by this. That way there's no arcing damage that's accumulating and we move that variable too. I'll do arcing testing later. And let's get started. Just as for reference, the white brass one was about 0.033, or it'll come up as 33 millivolts here. And the aluminum was about 0.045 or 45 millivolts. And 0.025. Point oh two six. Point oh two six. Point oh two six. Doesn't get any more consistent than that. That is fabulous. That is just a solid point zero two six, which makes it the lowest of the three so far, uh, between the aluminum, white brass, and brass, which is what we would expect. Just a little bit of a difference, not a huge one, because uh, we're only losing about one watt of power uh, through this at the most. A little bit of a difference uh, by switching metals. Uh, but keeping everything else the same. And let's go to 18650 and see if there's any difference. Now in the aluminum I didn't see a difference but in the white brass I did see a bit of a difference. I'm going to do this uh, down like the uh, instructions say. No rattle, that's good. Yeah, that's a little too much of a gap. do want as many of the threads to gauge as possible. Okay, that went to zero, so that's good. And let's see what we get for 18650. 31. 32. 32. 32, 33, 32. Okay, I'm going to call this 32, which is terrific. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is set up, and the readings were nice and consistent too, which I like. that is on too tight, I'm going to go find a way to take that off. Okay, nice uh, piece of neoprene rubber and that helps me remove it. Okay, what we're going to do now is set up for the arcing test to 0.2 ohm resistors in parallel or 0.1 ohms and I need to get I forgot it again, I forgot this two videos ago, a VTC-5A that I use for all my testing. I'll be right back. 
Okay, VTC 5A and you, still, you want to participate still. You had your chance. And we want to make sure current is flowing. I left it on. It's only been four days. There it turns off. Alright. Alright, 34.6, 34.5, and that's good. Okay, what I'm going to do now is 300, 300 button presses. I'm not going to subject you to that. I, I will f cut out the everything in the middle, but uh, I'm going to push at different areas. Um, you know, add a little bit of variability to it and then check in for uh, arcing damage. And one, two, three, four, five, four, nine, five, nine, six, nine, seven, nine, eight, nine, nine, three hundred. Hee hee hee. Okay, and, oops. Let's check for damage. Hot heat sink. I'm not going to touch that. I learned my lesson from other videos. Warm battery, that's cool. And with the way this mod works, you have a clutch plate. That this insulated button goes down, you hit the plate, the plate expands outward, bringing the current from this pin touching the battery to touch the side of the mod. And it's spread out, the current is spread out in these three segments. So I'm going to check for arcing damage on the inside lip here. And using a magnifier, I'll check now. Just tiniest of like contact points. That's nice to see. No big arcing damage or anything like that. We'll check on this. The clutch plate. Essentially nothing. Just the tiniest hint that it was touching on anything. So that's fantastic to see there, especially those high current levels, 30, above 30 amps. And that is it for the arcing testing. So this test uh, arcs um, about the same as the white brass, a little bit better than the aluminum. And we still have the copper to go for the next one. We'll see how that one works. That's it for the arcing testing. We're going to move on to thermal imaging. Okay, ready for the thermal testing. It is wrapped in a single layer of electrical tape to increase its ability to emit infrared radiation because glossy metal or shiny metal is terrible at it. And I'll show you later why. You just read the reflections, temperature reflections. And we have got 30 amps of current, which I'm going to program in now. And we're going to start the current flow now. Now I would expect with its low resistance that there wouldn't be much heating at all here. But we're going to give this some time. Not a lot. I'm not going to waste everybody's time. We'll just look for heating. We're looking for hot spots. Going to rotate this around a bit. I keep my left thumb in the picture just to have an even hotter spot. If I take it out doesn't do as well when all the temperatures are very close to each other. So it gives something hotter in here. And it's just a little bit easier to see everything. Okay, the butt is maybe ew, a degree hotter or something, but that's also where I was spinning it. But it's the mech, all this time, been 30 amps, which is brutal. 30 amps continuous flowing through the mech, and it still hasn't reached body temperature, which is what I would expect, uh, being the yellow brass and the low resistance. You can see uh, the drip tip and the cable up here are hot, where my hands were holding it and where the current's flowing through. Not hot, but uh, up towards uh, body temperature. All right, so now you can see the button is maybe uh, a degree or two hotter. I'm not going to waste any more of your time. No hot spots. That's fantastic. And if we take off the tape, now you can see see the reflection of my hand? Shiny metal, you read the temperature of the reflections, not of the metal itself, but where there's the tape across here, that helps emit the infrared radiation, and you can read the temperature accurately.
So, great low voltage drop, uh, no heating, no hot spots, and very little arcing damage. This did very well. That's it for this episode. Thank you for watching.